Uh, thank you, Mr. Chairman. Uh, and thank you all for being with us today. General George, I want to come to you. I know that you're aware that University of Tennessee and Vanderbilt are the first Pathfinder partnership for the Army Futures Command. And we fully appreciate, we know what that means to our state, and we appreciate that these academic researchers get to interact with the fabulous troops at the 101st Airborne and also the 160th Special Operations Aviation Regiment there at Fort Campbell. And they are working on next generation technologies and end user insight. And this is a, a solid partnership. So what I'd like to ask you for the record is what are the Army's biggest lessons learned from implementing this program? Um, how could these lessons be used to inform future partnerships for emerging technologies? And then how could you take this Pathfinder model and have it inform the efforts of the services and DOD more generally? Senator, uh, thank you for that. So the Catalyst Pathfinder program, uh, as you um, well know, is is really um, in its infancy. Uh, we've got a great start, especially with uh, Vanderbilt and, uh, as you mentioned, the 101st Airborne. And so I think what we've got to do is watch to see how the interaction between our soldiers and the uh, academic institution, the scientists there, um, uh, plays out. And one of the things that we're doing is ensuring that one of our research leaders from the Army Research Lab is partnered there as well. And so, as you just described, we have got to learn from uh, how this works and um, what the outcomes are. So we're, we're going to be looking for the outcomes to see if there um, are, are valued um, solutions that are proposed that could feed into Army priorities. Um, and certainly then look to see if this is some program that we'd like to expand. Okay, do you feel like you're fully maximizing the partnerships that you have in play now? With the Catalyst Pathfinder uh, partnerships, um, like I said, I, th I think we've got to do some learning still. Uh, we, okay. We're further along with uh, the partnerships in Tennessee. and So you have room to grow with those? Uh, yes, I do believe we do. Okay. All right, um, let me talk to you a little bit about uh, workforce and workforce development because we're always focused on great power competition, China and Russia, and we know that workforce is really crucial to develop um, and implement some of these emerging technologies. And an important part of this effort for DOD and commercial industry is to create robust and competitive hiring pipelines for STEM professionals. And um, what I'd like for you to touch on is uh, what, we, what would be the threat to our warfighters if we were to lose the advantage we have now in AI and um, I included a provision in last year's NDAA authorizing the direct hiring of AI professionals. And so I'd like for you to touch on how that direct hiring affects or supports the work that you're doing. The Senator, for the, for the Army, um, we are liberally using the direct hiring authority, and uh, it has been a very uh, powerful tool for us to bring in talent uh, at the speed that we need it. Thank you. I, I appreciate that. I think that as we look at these emerging technologies, this is going to be so important um, for us. One other question I'd love to ask you as we talk about AI talent and the federal workforce and the military, what what role do you see for the National Guard and our reserve components playing in this endeavor to increase this talent pool? Senator, we're partnered with the 75th Innovation Command, which is a reserve command uh, with um, Army Futures Command. And they've been very helpful bringing um, expertise into um, you know, every conversation we have, 
And uh, in particular, since we have them and the, our AI integration center in the same command under Futures Command, it's just increased the collaboration that we have. Excellent. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Thank you, Senator.